live. All right, insert great intro right here, and that's it. Happy Sunday, everyone. <laughs> Welcome back to episode, gosh, I forget, nine maybe? How many weeks have we been doing this? Nine? Oh, nine. Let, let's, um, let's call it that, episode 009, uh, on this Ascension Sunday. Welcome back, nice hot one. But, uh, yeah. yeah, it's toasty out. Yeah. It's kind of a big day. There's a lot going on. I would say. Why is it a big day, Father Chase? Well, you announced that uh, we have some celebrating to do today. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. <laughs> celebrating of We first day. started with Mass. That was the first start of the celebration. Okay. Celebration of the Ascension. Yep. And we got some anniversary celebrating to do, which starts with Mass always, so, you know, it's a good way to start it out. Anniversary to the priesthood. May 24th, 2008. Where were you? I know where he was. 2008. He was in this cathedral. 2014, I know where we were on May 24th. So, yeah. Big day, big memory. So, what anything, uh, and then also <laughs> the big memories. I so, would there's, say. There's, there's, that. there's that. There is that. Any questions? Uh, about that? <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna make it a preemptive strike. We're gonna try to guess what would be your questions out there about an ordination day, and I have one. I have one uh, memory. But then also we were talking about this the other day that it was forgotten upon that it's Memorial Day weekend also, oh. the official the official start of summer. At least that's what I always thought of it as. So it's the first day that feels like summer to me. Whoo. Ooh, well, that was there's... the last couple days. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is pretty high yesterday. Yeah, yeah. last couple days. And um, so we got that, and we got to distribute Holy Communion after Mass. There's just a, it's a lot so going good. on. It's a lot going on. Is there any um, particular memory that we want to share from our ordination? I have one that actually happened uh, during the investment. The vest, uh, invest, sure, invest, sure. Is that what you would call that? Vesting. The vesting. What is that? Tell the people. What well. That is. So during the liturgy of ordination of new priests, after all the prayers have been done, now you got to look like a priest because the bishop has invoked the power of the Holy Spirit to come and, and create new priests. And so then to the side of that is the first time we put on a chasuble, that outer garment that's worn during Mass. Um, and in Peoria, we have a particular vestment that we all share. We all, um, well, we don't share one vestment. We all have our own type of style that uh, is our DAS investment. We got that placed upon us. Monsignor Ketchum was a priest oh. that invested in me as he was the head chaplain here when I was the uh, when I was a student, and so I thought he was a uh, big mover of my vocation. So he was in a, he invested in me, but he was so excited and he has a big grin on his face. Yes. And he got the you take the chasuble off of the chair and he put it on me that. The whole back half was like up, <clears throat> and it and he hugged me and he started to walk away and I'm just standing there and I got like basically my backside showing, of, <laughs> of the owl, the, just the owl and the whole thing's tucked up, <clears throat> so with the whole ca cathedral behind, behind you, everybody right? behind so, me looking at it, you know, it's like that's not supposed to look like that, and so one of Father Lampet's classmates, Father Dustin Schultz, was sitting behind my mother. Uh, just happened to be that way, and so he's like hitting mom and saying, "Hey, hey, fix that for him. Tell tell him it's off." You know, and he, apparently he said that he did that like a couple times. Mom didn't want to interrupt. The, See, father. The, uh, yeah. See you guys. He's bored. <laughs> Your show. He's, he's bored. already bored with my story. <laughs> what a punk. What a punk. I tell you. But uh, anyway, so I just stayed up there until finally Monsignor Gray um, thought, figured it out and pulled it back down. So anyway. Yep. That was my story of the of the day in the cathedral. Oh, Chase is I remember it being a really hot day just It was very hot. It was hot. We were sweating. So you have all these layers this. on. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna share something I just I just thought of this while Father Lucas was was talking, some of the memories came back. But um <laughs> Thanks for listening, well, Father yes. Lucas. <laughs> yeah. uh, I heard his backside was showing. I mean that's 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 what everybody heard, right? I'm gonna have to go, yeah, right. Yeah, you know, on on our ordination day, this is one of the things that I remember. So I received this uh, this rosary. Um, which is really special, but um, it was from the bishop. So here's the handwritten note that, that he wrote me on the ordination day. Mm -hmm. Really simple, and, and it was given to each of us. So Father Lucas has the same one. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a it's, a, it's called the Venerable Fulton J. Sheen Ordination Rosary. Um, and it says right here what, what everything means on it, but it was blessed and recited by our bishop, Bishop Daniel Jenke, for me on the vigil of my ordination. So it's just a really cool, my bishop was praying for me the night before he ordained us, right? Ooh, so yeah. for all of us. 
So real quick, it's the Fulton Sheen Rosary, and here's here's what it 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 commemorates, right? Um, the bronze Byzantine crucifix recalls Sheen's love for the Eastern Rite and his bi-ritual faculties. That's if you don't know what that means, uh, that's a long story, and um, maybe you can look that up. Just Google. Yeah, and then um, what's really cool, and maybe the one thing that I like best about this this rosary is that there's black matte beads on all the Hail Marys, and the black matte onyx beads recalls the priest's cassock and Venerable Fulton Sheen's love for the ordained priesthood. So that's kind of the, the coolest part for me. But also, um, on, each of the, um, on each of the Our Fathers of the Glory Bees, um, they are faceted stone nugget paters, recalls Fulton Sheen's leadership of the propagation of the faith and the embrace of the world in prayer, the mission rosary which he designed. So he designed this mission rosary. And so on one of the beads, it's yellow. The yellow represents Asia's rising sun. One of them is white. And it represents Europe, the home of the Holy Father. The blue represents the waters of the island nations of Oceania. And the green, the, gla the grasslands of Africa. So it's like a world mission rosary. Awesome. It was, it, was, uh, it was designed by Monsignor Prendergast, who just passed away just um, right. during this, this, this quarantine. So anyway, may he rest in peace. And that's, that's the story of, of what I received on the, on the morning of my ordination, just before we went into the cathedral. So cool memory. Yeah, absolutely. I wonder if he had all four of those in his hand. He must have. Or you know, did he pray for, did he use mine at a different time? I just know I that he prayed for us. For us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worried about if he prayed it once or four times. Or... That's right. But I guess I got that and I have that in my room. Oh, Father Lampet, any ordination memories? You have to go back a little further. Yeah. 12 yeah. years ago. Today. Yeah. Special. <laughs> it's all the four to that twelfth anniversary. Yeah. That's right. Is that, the, is that the copper anniversary? Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. Do you, like, do you get him his aluminum board. foil? Oh my goodness! <laughs> what's that? What? I'm curious. What is the, what's, what is a twelfth year what is gift? Twelfth. What do I still it? owe you? Yeah. Let's see what it is. What can we do? Silk. 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 A silk vestment. Silk stoles. Face mask. Yeah. Okay. Silk, silk face mask. mask. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. The silk anniversary. Oh, but the modern 12th anniversary present is pearls. Oh, my some pearls for my chalice. You have pearls on your chalice. I do. What's I the story do. of those? The, what, real quick before we go to that, like um, something that's real special for us is our chalices. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we all have different stories about our chalices and where they came from or, or, yep. or who paid for them or, or how they were refurbished or what have you. But yep. I noticed on yours you have... Um, Yep, I have, so, I have, have some, some nice things on yours. Yeah. <laughs> so the um, he rated his grandmother's <laughs> right. closet. Wait a minute. Right. Wait a minute. Right. So I thought of becoming a priest. Say I need every time uh, I would lift up the chalice. I want to. Yes, heaven and earth are coming together. I no matter where we are at, whatever uh, time it is, I would like the ladies of my life to be there at mass with me. So I have um, a cross made out of pearls that came from from mom. And, um, and just to, so every time I see that cross, I remembered of my mother and the gift of faith that she was a part of, absolutely instrumental. Mm -hmm. So she gave those from a, uh, from a necklace, I believe. So, and Lucas always comes up on this show. Well, she's just, so, well, yeah, so I'll good. ask. I so tell you good. what, they tell you, you and Lucas. And, um, and then there, I have two others. I have a little Ruby that came from, um, a uh, piece of jewelry from my grandmother Lucas and a diamond that came from a ring from my grandmother Cunningham. Mm -hmm. So I got grandma's with me and mom with me on that chalice. So yeah, that's so cool. That's that's where those come from. Yeah. Cool. And it, it kind of worked out because mom wasn't much of a is not much of a jewelry wearer anyway. So she liked to see that put to good use. Yeah. What's the backstory to that to the chalice as a whole? Chalice is a, um, that came, that was actually a, uh, chalice that was gifted to me by, um, Mendota, Holy Cross in Mendota. Oh, yeah. Nice. And the reason is because, you know, we have such a great presbyterate that when guys are getting close to ordination, priests are, you know, asking, you know, do you have something lined up for a chalice? Do you need help finding a chalice? And so I needed help and... And um, so we had a, a priest that was on the coast. I hey, I would like this to be a personal chalice for a priest again, and mm. um, donated cool. and gave it. So and then I had it re replated and yeah. all that. So, mm -hmm. but it, it is from a parish. Now that I never asked if it was his to give, but <laughs> <laughs> but I just took Fair it enough. anyway. <laughs> Some questions you don't want to know. So we don't need the answer to. It's being put to good use. Yes. Yes.
I think it's supposed to be yours. Yeah, so I kind of brought him out here. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, we didn't know what we were going to talk about. So. <laughs> kind of cool <laughs> that. That's right. I mean, we did. Yeah. <laughs> you know exactly what we're we were doing. We rehearsed everything. Exactly what we're doing. Um, so I ended up, it, it's a long story, but I ended up receiving two chalices. Um, and one of them is, is very simple, and one of them is, is a little bit more ornate um, and nice, but they were given to me. and. Uh, again, a long story how it happened, but one the one that's that's probably the most special to me is the simple one. Mm. Um, and it's just, it's a very simple silver uh, chalice, but it was, um, ends up, you can either, basically when you get chalices, you can either buy one new, or like Father Lucas did, his has uh, a little bit of history and, and, and some sentimental value. And I've heard really cool stories of, of, of priests, even in seminary, or guys who were ordained before us that have really cool ch chalice stories, you know, about where they came from. And I decided at that time that if, if I was able to get a chalice um, that had sentimental value, that would be the most special to me, uh, more than having a new chalice, you know, something that had some history to it and sentimental value. And that's exactly what I got. It ends up happening that um, the priest who married my parents um, uh, is, is now deceased. And um, he was at this German parish in, in Quincy, Illinois, which is, which is where I was born, where my parents grew up and where a lot of my family is. And at that, at that German parish, that German parish had closed. So we just kind of had the thought, I wonder if there's anything left over from that parish that, that isn't being used or hasn't been thrown away or given away. And so I, I contacted the priest who had uh, done the closing of that parish and, and asked about it. And it just so happens it was in a back closet, kind of thrown away, tarnished. It was almost black because it was so old and, and just it hadn't been used. And he found this chalice that was actually, um, it, we found pictures of my parents' wedding. It's, it's really hard to tell what was on the altar at that time, but um, I'd like to think that that was the chalice that was on the altar, but it belonged personally to the priest who was, who was at the altar that day and, and married my parents. And so it was given to me on the bottom. It has his name inscribed in it, so I know that it's his personal chalice. Mm -hmm. And it's so cool. And it ended up, um, my mom, for one of her anniversaries, uh, close to my ordination, my dad gave her I think it was on the 25th or 30th uh, wedding anniversary. He gave her uh, a new wedding wedding ring, a really nice, a really nice new and, and updated ring. And so she gave to me on my ordination. She gave me her wedding ring, her original wedding ring, mm -hmm. and that is now um, it's it's um, what is it welded? It's welded into to that chalice. So mm -hmm. kind of cool, S similar yeah. sentiment that every time you know, um, of course, my my parents, thanks be to God, are still living. But even when they're they're gone, they'll be united to me in the in the Eucharist right there. And remembering how their vocation brought you know brought to life my vocation, you know, to the priesthood. So yeah, cool connection. Awesome. Absolutely. And you? Um, yeah. So my chalice is I wanted to have used a chalice because um, I wanted that history. Yeah. Didn't matter too much to me what the history was, but. Um, so a priest gave me that chalice that he had obtained and, um, so it's nothing, I don't really don't know the history of the chalice. We, we don't really know it that well, but got it replated. Mm -hmm. Um, my family pitched in for that to get it replated. A lot of times the family yeah. chips in for the chalice or <clears throat> refurbished or, or something like that. But, um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of the story of that one. I've had it replated a couple of times now because mm -hmm. it just kind of wears off after a while, but. This latest play, plating is lasting a long time. It's really nice. I will say, well, all of ours, I mean, that's, I guess it's all subjective of what, what you think about your chalice, but yours is really something special. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing mm -hmm. beauty. Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. A little, little, little stroll down our chalice memory lane there. <laughs> I like that. That's, that's awesome. Good history. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then anything standing out about the day? How are we going to, how might we celebrate? Or how would we like to celebrate today? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, or just any, you know, that's right. Just for whatever reason, any day. We well, I think we're gonna have a nice meal this evening and just yeah, kind of cool. enjoy. I'm a company. big fan of that. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, we wanted to get out today and do something since the weather's gonna be nice now. It yeah. may be too hot to do right. something. I don't know, <laughs> just sit in the air, we'll just sit in the air conditioning. It's fine. Feet sweat up. a little bit, but mm -hmm. yeah, we're gonna cook a nice dinner. Yeah, that's, that's 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 kind of the thing be. that we like to do. We have two of our seminarians still here, so another thing that's kind of cool is kind of witness to them how how priests might celebrate, you know, mm -hmm. and an ordination anniversary, and mm -hmm. and you know allow them to see it, you know, before it happens. So it's kind of. It's a fun day for us to, it's almost like, you know, spiritual fathers passing that down to, to men who will dream of maybe celebrating a, an anniversary one day. So 
Yep. It'll be a lot of fun to, just to hang out and not have much to do today. So we'll keep the Sabbath by resting. <laughs> yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And then Memorial Day, long weekend, but nothing too uh, different about that this year, except, you know, still in the quarantine. But we uh, keep praying for, for advancement and all of that. And uh, Do you guys have anybody in your families who died in war? Oh, well, that's correct. No, 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 not my. Um, both my oh, grandfathers right. served. Yeah. In the uh, one was in the army, one was in the navy. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, not died in action. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, we, both uh, of my grandparents also. Oh, yeah, grandfathers yeah. also served, but uh, either one of them, they all came back. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So blessings to all of those who have lost somebody in, in war and yeah. And we continue to, we'll pray for uh, for our students, maybe those that are in the ROTC, and we pray for, obviously, I know for, um, uh, <clears throat> for those serving, and we especially pray yeah, for the pros of the soul of those that gave their life in service to the country. And, uh, you know, I think we're just to celebrate, we're going to just kind of give you that, uh, a little insight into our day, but we might uh, call it, I know, a little earlier here today, so we can uh, get that rest on a little earlier, but <laughs> it's always a joy to be with you. If you saw... If you haven't yet, you will, but we are now offering communion um, uh, through, thanks be to God, really, just now we're starting to see, because I like to see it as every bit of progress, like a little bit is changing, a little bit is getting back to where we'd like to be. So uh, just stay tuned, follow along. If you're in town, please come make use of it, and uh, we give you all the, what you need to do so safely. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm very grateful to have someone uh, who leads the way, so with Father Lampet that can think through this stuff because I look at it and I get overwhelmed, quite honestly. And I know he does too, but he hides it well. <laughs> because it's just, um, there's so much there, but we want to do it safely and we want to bring Jesus to you. So um, keep praying for us as we do that here through the summer. And as Father mentioned before Mass, um, you know we still want to bring all that we can to you during the summer months. So enjoy the beginning of these summer uh, months, but stay connected with us and uh, we continue to grow in faith. So, yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's a great little little. Uh, Good to be with y'all. Yeah. yeah, have a yeah, great weekend. Good. Enjoy your families. Enjoy uh, the beginning of the summer season. Let Amen. us know if you need anything. Amen. Bless you.